What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be putting in some uh, new cylinder heads for the RD. Um, they're HVC cycle heads. Um, there's not a whole lot of reviews on them, but I've heard good things about putting some CNC heads on these bikes. You get like at least four to five horsepower, hopefully. Um, they change the squish band and the compression ratio a little bit. So let's do some unboxing. I've had these on the shelf for a while, so I've already read through this stuff. Um, I was just kind of waiting to get the uh, dial gauge for the bike and check the timing before I put them on. Make sure everything's good to go, but regardless, I'm excited because these things look sweet. Look at these. So I'm not super crazy about the gold. Um, there are two options were gold and anodized silver. Um, they were out of the silver ones when at the time I was ordering these and they're made in small batches. Um, so I just want to pick some up before they were out and before I got the chance to buy them. Um, I think it'll go with the accents of, uh, of the gold accents of the bike, but it's going to be kind of like 50 shades of gold because we have like a gold Brembo that's like kind of a more dull color. We have the, the ground forks, which are like shinier gold. And then we have these eBay special shocks, which are like almost like an orangey gold kind of color. So, but uh, regardless, I'm buying them more so for the uh, performance benefits rather than styling. Um, either way, it'll be sweet. And being that this thing's a two stroke, no valves, no timing chains, no garbage, should be pretty straightforward. I'm um, just gonna have to take some measurements before I actually mount it on and uh, make sure that the cylinder jugs haven't been modified. Um, so in the instructions, they kind of tell you to take some measurements um, in different ways. I think what I'll do is just pop the, pop the heads off and then check them that way. Let's get to it. Blow out any shit. All right. Take a look at the bore, which actually I still see cross hatching there. Man, these, this looks really good, which is great. The thing has uh, just under 11,000 miles on it, to the best of my knowledge. That's what the uh, original gauge was at, and I. I set the Moto Gadget up to that as well. Let's see if we can <clears throat> get you guys a better view. It's hard to get the GoPro in there, but to the naked eye, I mean, it looks pretty good. There is, no, I mean, there's cross hatching. There's a tiny bit of wear right there just because as the piston moves forward and back the skirt will probably slide on there a little bit but i mean nothing major no uh no gouges nothing crazy i'm pretty happy with that sweet so now we're not going to be using this copper gasket anymore what we're going to be using is those o-rings that they provide So we want this surface nice and clean so that o-ring seats well. Maybe I'll get a little bit of scotch bright even, but let's read up. I know it said something about you can measure with sticking a piece of solder through the spark plug hole after you install these guys and then measure um, how much that solder is compressed. And it's supposed to be within a specification or put the piston at top dead center. Top edge should be Ten thou to fifteen thou below the top of the cylinder surface without the gasket installed. If your piston edge sticks up above the top surface, 
Cylinder base may have been modified in the past. Shit. Wish they had a picture. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is do option two, which is put the set, put the head on, um, assemble it as if I'm putting it together, then put the solder in and kick it over and measure it. All right. Man, for being original pistons and bore, I mean, 10,000 miles, being a two-stroke, that is impressive. This thing is... Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Sweet. I'm happy with that. And you're putting on the head. There we go. Cool. Get the trusty, crusty Harbor Freight finest ever torque crunch. I've used this thing on everything, from Vanos bolts on that thing to uh, rebuilding the the top end on KX125. I've got so should be all right. Oh, this will be the final torque. All right, so what I've done is I got some thick solder. <clears throat> I think it's, this is actually probably plumbing solder, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's soft enough to where it doesn't damage anything. So what I did, since I have the other cylinder head right here, is I cut it to a size to where I'll be able to drop it in from up top, down the spark plug hole. And then the squish band is the area like outside of the combustion chamber. So this is the squish and your piston is supposed to mate up to this uh, within a certain distance. And so I've made it long enough to where I can reach over and hit the, the end, like the, the, the edge of the cylinder wall. And so that's how I know I'm gonna be right at the edge. And so then I'm gonna kick the starter over and then it's gonna squish that lid, um, squish the, the, the solder, and then I'll be able to measure that. And then as long as it's not any less than 32 thousandths of an inch, then I am good to go. Okay, I think that should be it. Let's get it in place. There we go. There it is. Crank it over. There we go. Shit. 0 0.330. 0 0.300. Oh man. It's so hard to tell. I really want to run these, as you can tell. Okay, we got a solid squish out of that. 0.310. All right, so um, I went ahead and measured this the squish like a bunch of times with the solder, um, and I realized I'm an idiot, and the caliper was not fully zeroed when I started, um, so it just had like a little piece here, so I just had to wipe it, clear it off, whatever. Um, so now what I'm getting is like 33 to 31. Uh, for that solder width. So this side's about 33 and the inside's about 31. Um, I did some reading and really about 30 thousandths is the tightest you want to go. So I think for now I'm comfortable with doing this. Um, worst case, it's not too tight to where uh, you're going to have some sort of interference, hopefully. Um, you want room for that expansion of like in high RPMs, the, the piston going any higher. Um, but also stuff gets weird with like the combustion chamber I guess and you blow out spark if the squish is too tight so worst case it'll just kind of break up in the in the high end of the rpms and that's when I'll know that it's too tight I gotta I think maybe I could do like a higher octane fuel or then I may mess around with the uh, with the base gaskets I think um, for now I'm comfortable running this um, 
I will accept the consequences because I want this thing to be faster because it's already too fast for its own good, so why not make it even worse? Um, so yeah, let's do the other side, put it together, go on a test ride. That's a scary feeling for head bolts. Oh man. <sighs> yeah, those base gaskets might not be sealing perfectly anymore, which is not ideal, but we'll worry about that when it becomes a problem. There we go. Okay. Ooh, fancy high tech. All right, so did some Googling. I think I'm okay, um, but I also reached out to an old friend that uh, deals with a lot of two-stroke bikes. He does some flat track racing. Um, and he used to race these bikes back in the day. Basically what he said is the opposite of what I thought. He said to measure the squish front to back. Um, and actually you're supposed to do both sides at once. So what I did was I basically took some solder, stretched it out so it's at the, the edge of each um, cylinder wall. And then tape it onto the piston. And it's, it's on the upstroke so as soon as I kick it, it'll go up. I'll put the head on without the o-ring. Just get the, get the bolts snug so that it's totally seated and then measure that and uh, see where the squish ends up. And then I might have to repeat that on the opposite side too, just to be safe and consistent. So let's see what this ends up being. Mm, that looks thin. Yeah, I don't know. The thing that I always forget, put this cover back on. Mm. I'm pretty nervous, I don't know. Um, I'm clearly about to run this bike when the instructions say don't do it if it's below this number. And it is below that number, however, a very experienced man has told me that it should be fine. And the internet says it's, it's okay. So, I don't know, everyone, well not everyone, but people said why are you doing a ground fork swap? Ground forks are trash, and it's like, they look good. If you change out the internals, they're fine. If you always listen to everybody else, I don't know, you'll never try anything new. So, although this isn't <laughs> something groundbreaking, this is more so like, I'll just fuck my motor up. Um, but, I don't know, I'm willing to try it. If it blows up, it blows up. It's fine. I guess it's part of the process. I don't think it'll be that bad. Um, I'll probably have to rejet it. Uh, usually when you increased compression, stuff like that. It actually takes less fuel to get a complete burn, so you could go leaner, but it is kind of chilly out. It's like 60s, maybe 70. Um, we'll see how it runs, if it runs at all. Only one way to find out, I guess. Fuel on. Take it out of the garage so if it blows up, doesn't burn the house down. All right, moment of truth. Also, I think I toasted the battery, but. Let it warm up a bit.
It sounds a little bit more crisp off the pipe. So that's interesting. Definitely more of a crisp tone off the pipe, that's, that's for sure. Just got back from the test drive this thing rips um i realized at the end of it that i forgot to put the little foam over the gopro so the audio is terrible um i'll go on another ride just uh, with the foam to get some better sound um, but the thing rips now there's a lot more low-end torque and the power band rips but now the clutch slips of course um, to my knowledge it's original still just like freaking everything else on this bike <laughs> um so i'm kind of in between now i know the squish is a little, a little tight so it makes sense to uh, get a shim or a thicker base gasket. I'm kind of torn because like if I have to do the clutches and then re-shim the gasket, it's like, is it worth doing or do I just put it away from the, for the season and just kind of build the motor over the winter? Um, so I'll do some research, think about it. Um, but for now, let's go on another ride, get some good footage. Um, and that's it. Heads are installed. They look pretty good, actually. Um, I, I didn't think they, I, th I thought they'd be kind of obnoxious, but they, they look pretty good. So I'm happy with it. So yeah, let's go for one more ride.
Man, this thing feels great. I'm so happy with this. It is way peppier now. More torque, more top end. I'm still concerned. I know it's a little bit tight. Some people say it's fine. So I don't know what to think. I gotta do some research, but for now, it runs great. I can't, I couldn't be happier. It's so much fun. I can't wait till this thing's all done up and could properly ride it, get the aluminum triple clamp so I don't have to be afraid of this anymore. And I probably shouldn't be riding it till I get <laughs> that clamp on, but. All right, so that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Uh, if, if you have anything you want to comment, leave a comment. This is uh, my first time really doing any sort of videos, so editing this will be interesting. Hopefully it's not crap. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you next time.